After drawing and specifying all of the required material, before creating a framing layout that can be sent to the field for use, you can add value to your takeoff efforts by spending a little bit of time on the labels and notes for your plan. When it comes to labels, by default, most of the materials automatically receive a label to help identify them on your framing layout. But sometimes those labels obscure things. For example, on this beam, the label is hiding some of the hangers. But if we right click on it, go to label position and choose right of A to B, now that label shifts downward and we can see those hangers more clearly. In a similar fashion, this post label is covering these hangers. If we go to label position and choose northwest instead of the northeast position, the label shifts and now we can see those hangers more clearly. Up in the toolbar, you'll notice that there is a collection of several other tools that allow you to bring clarity to your material takeoff. For example, let's say that you want to add a note in the upper left hand corner indicating where the layout of the material starts at. We'll start by using the annotation note tool. Here we'll select it and an edit window pops up where we'll enter the text for our note. In this case, start layout here at 16 inches on center. With the rich text editing capabilities, you can change many of the properties of the text. Here we can make it right justified, set the font to our desired font family, change the font size, and even change the font color if desired. Once we have completed all of the desired settings that we want for our particular text, we'll click OK, and we'll be able to draw a box indicating where this text should go by clicking one corner and then an opposing corner, and the text is then placed on the page. By clicking and dragging the center node, we can position the text as desired. We can use the call outline tool to indicate specifically where a particular text message is referring to. We start the tool and then come and click a point where the line should begin. But as we start to draw, notice that we have difficulty in getting it at the correct angle that we want because the ortho function is on. We'll come to the lower toolbar here, click on the ortho on button to turn it off, and now we can draw that line easily at the angle that's desired. We can right click on the line and set an arrow to be on the B end of the line. And now we had more clarity to where this specific start layout text is referring to. Another markup item that can be used is the dimension tool to give clarity to where specific items or locations are positioned on the plan. We start the tool, click where the dimension starts. We can use the ortho back on so that we can have a perfectly flat line. Click the second point and now the dimension is added to the print. If you have a collection of images that you like to make use of to add clarity to your layouts, you can insert them by making use of the image tool. Here we'll click on the button and we'll browse to the specific location on our computer where we have the images stored. We'll select the image, click open, and then we can draw the extents of where we want that image to be placed. In this case, we use a plumbing fixture to bring clarity to where the drains will land in relationship to the floor joists. In addition to these markup item types, you can also make use of the clouding tool and the highlighter tool to draw attention to specific areas of the print. Or you can also use the detail tag tool to identify specific locations on the drawing where standard or custom framing detail conditions exist. Any markup items that you choose to add to the page will be shown in the markup items list at the left hand side of the screen where they can be managed and adjusted as needed. Now that we've added clarity to our material takeoff, we're ready to make preparations to create a framing layout.